everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this week's video is going to be all about the UCATs. I have two wonderful medical students who have given up some of their time to provide you with useful tips on how you can ace the UCAT. So I hope you enjoy the video and as always make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and turn the bell on so you don't miss out on any future videos. Hello everyone, my name is Lili Kitenge and I've just finished first year of medical school at Barts in the London. I'm from Jani to Med and I'm here today to give you guys some tips on how to ace the UCAT. The UCAT is actually an aptitude test that many medical schools use for entry into the medical programmes. It consists of five sections, verbal reasoning, situational judgment, decision making, abstract reasoning and quantitative reasoning. It's very important to familiarise yourself with the different sections and what they consist of. They vary in very unique ways. So it's really important to know what you need to do to score the top marks in each and every one of these sections. In terms of UCAT resources, one thing that I used that was so pivotal in ensuring that I scored the best score I possibly could in my UCAT was Medify. Medify was extremely useful in explaining what the different sections consisted of, which I always suggest you do first before attempting any practice questions. There are other resources that you can use that are very useful for UCAT preparation, UCAT official app, as well as the 1250 UCAT questions book. I found this very useful for my preparation. I think it's important as well that when you're doing practice questions, you're actually noting down what types of questions you're getting wrong and why. With resources such as Medify, and there definitely are resources as well that can help you do this it will tell you why a certain question is wrong and what the right answer is and why i think it's important to make a mental note or even a physical note on what you did wrong and how to actually avoid it in the future practice makes perfect it's important to do as many practice questions as possible so don't spend too long trying to familiarize yourself with different sections the minute you get the gist of it definitely start with the practice questions i wouldn't suggest doing any mocks or any time mocks until you're fully comfortable with the different sections and you've done a bit more practice. Get into the habit of using the whiteboard or the scratch pad feature that you'll have on the day when you're doing your practice. It's always useful to be able to jot things down as you practice. One of my friends actually bought a keyboard because she knew that she'd be doing it on the computer and this helped her for practice and getting used to the format that she'd be in on her exam day. If you're doing it at home, then definitely practice in that setting. If you're doing it in a test center, try and replicate it as much as possible with things like minimal noise and your full concentration. One other thing that might be useful is to actually get familiar with shortcuts that you can use on your keyboard in your UCAT exam. I will put these down below in the description box so that you know what they are. In addition to this, it's also important to take things into your own hands. So for example, if you're struggling with quantitative reasoning, then you might want to work on your mental math skills outside of UCAT practice. The preparation you do should definitely reflect your progress. So if you're someone who finds abstract reasoning a bit more difficult than situational judgment, you might tend to spend more time doing abstract reasoning questions compared to situational judgment. Of course, you shouldn't completely ignore one section than another, but you should definitely prioritize when doing practice according to your weaknesses. Definitely use the flag and skip method to your advantage. Sometimes you're gonna have a question that is more difficult than another question and they are both worth the same mark. You need to know when you're wasting too much time on a question and it's time to flag, skip, move on to the next one that might be easier to answer and keep doing that and go back to the difficult ones at the end. This helps you to save time and if you don't look at that question for a period of time as you go through the others, it might actually give you time to really think and when you look at it with a fresh set of eyes, you might understand what you think the answer should be and even how to work it out. Always read the question first. This will actually save you time because you know exactly what you're looking for and you're not wasting time looking at information you don't need to look at. Pay attention to what the question is asking of you. Don't overthink some questions. Some questions are actually simpler than they seem or because you're panicked, you might actually overthink it and pick the wrong one. So sometimes you do need to trust your instinct. Time mocks are very useful to do when your UCAT exam is approaching because this will actually help you to prepare in timed conditions. If you're given three, four hours, you might actually get full marks on the UCAT. But one other challenge of it is that it is in time condition. So you should definitely take that into consideration. Give yourself adequate time to prepare. Usually six weeks is enough and it's actually what I did when preparing for my UCAT exam. 
two weeks is just not enough and even if you do intense work you might not get the best score that you possibly could get so give yourself enough time to prepare i used to actually do one to two hours a day and i gradually increased this as my ucat exam was coming up of course there are some days where you won't be able to do ucat prep as life happens it's fine just make sure that you practice as much as you can at first it will seem quite tricky quite challenging and even ridiculous maybe the types of questions that you'll be exposed to in the ucat is not a format that you're necessarily used to but it's fine it's important to have that self-belief and that motivation that you can do it if others who had no idea what the UCAT was did it and they were fine then you can do it as well if you already be negative and telling yourself you can't do it you will find that preparation will be more difficult try and focus on the fact that you can do it you will be able to do it if you really like this video then do make sure that you check out my youtube channel journey to men definitely subscribe to this amazing channel as well thank you guys bye everyone i'm Uwa and i'm a 2020 medicine offer holder so i received my a level results about two weeks ago now and i achieved two a stars and two a's so i'll be starting med school next month thank you to dr baptist for reaching out to me a couple months ago and asking if i'd like to do a collab with her she's featuring on my page in my ask a medic series i'll leave her post there so basically she's going to be answering questions from my followers about herself and her life as a GP so if you'd like to see the outcome of that follow me on my Instagram to keep up with the progress of Dr Baptist's posts in this video I'm going to talk to you about the UCAT I'll give you a brief overview of what the UCAT is um, breakdown of each section and also my top three tips for answering each UCAT section. I sat the UCAT last year and it was a really difficult exam. Quite yeah. simply, the UCAT is an admission test that medical and dentistry schools use to help select their applicants. So straight off the UCAT official website, it says that the UCAT helps universities to select applicants with the most appropriate mental ability, attitudes and professional behaviours required for new dentists and doctors to be successful in their clinical careers. In other words, it's a way for universities to initially and quickly assess how you can work under pressure. Also, given that both both medicine and dentistry are quite competitive fields to apply to. It helps universities to better select applicants to invite to interviews which they feel are best suited towards individual courses. So the UCAT stands for University Clinical Aptitude Test and it measures your cognitive ability over five sections which are designed to assess different skills that are required by doctors and dentists. So these are skills such as integrity, empathy, problem solving, basic mathematical skills, communication, spatial awareness and teamwork. So the test itself is a two hour exam and it's something you will pay for yourself. There's a window in which you can sit it in. In previous years it has been between about 1st of July and around the 3rd of October but due to the pandemic this year they did shorten it so testing opened on the 1st of August up until the 1st or 2nd of October. The test is two hours long and each section is individually timed. That's a really brief overview of what the UCAT is and what it entails. In order to do well in the UCAT it's something that you should work hard at and you should practice a lot. As well as practicing and working hard it's important that you understand in as much detail as you can the theory behind each of the five sections of the UCAT as well as the points that I previously raised and I'm just going to give you a brief outline of each section as well as my three top tips. The first section is verbal reasoning and this tests your ability on how you are able to understand and synthesize information presented to you in passages. So just to give you an idea of how a question will look, you're presented with a passage probably about this thick or maybe even bigger and in that you've got about two to three hundred words you're given 22 minutes to answer 44 questions and with that i advise that you always read the question first in the allocated time you don't have the opportunity to read the whole passage and then answer the questions read the question first and then skim read the passage and look for the key information that you need this will save you time and reduce any pressure my next tip on this section is practice your skim reading so like i said you're not going to read the whole passage first you just don't have the time so with your skim reading you'll look for keywords these are stuff that are going to be mentioned in the question so this can be things with capital letters so names and places or numbers so key dates or phone numbers or unusually long words my third tip for this section is to practice reading quickly and understanding what you've read so a key skill for this section is understanding and comprehension how well can you synthesize and what can you make out of what you've just read a good way of practicing this if you've got the time 
is to do it with UCAT texts. So without the time pressure, just read through a passage of text as quickly as you can and then jot down briefly what you've understood from what you've just read. This is going to get you into the habit of comprehending information quickly and hopefully sharpen up your ability to skim read. The next section is quantitative reasoning and this tests your mathematical ability but only up until GCSE level. So it is a really basic level of maths. It's not going to be anything advanced or anything you can't handle per se. So my top tips for this section is to brush up on your mental maths. Yes, you are given an online calculator, but the online calculator is really slow and really basic, but at the same time, it can be quite difficult to use. The more you can do in your head, the more time you're going to save, and the more you're going to reduce any pressure that you may feel or that you may face. So in short, know your timetables up until your 12 or your 13 timetables. Be able to add, subtract and divide from the top of your head just really quickly. It sounds basic, but if you're so used to using the calculator in your everyday life, you don't realise how long it'll actually take you to recall this information. As and when you can, just brush up on your mental maths. Another tip is going to save you time and you're only going to really understand this when you start practising the UCAT with the UCAT software. So know your calculator shortcuts. There are keyboard shortcuts you can use to easily get the calculator up, but there's also functions on the calculator that you should get familiar with that could save you a lot of time. These are things such as the memory function and this is when you store a number in the calculator for recall later or to add or subtract that number. You also want to use the percentage function and the square root function. If you can do your square roots in your head, perfect, but if not, know how to quickly access it on the calculator and same with percentages of amounts. If you can do it in your head, even better, but if not, you've got the option to do it on the calculator and just know how to quickly and easily get to this. Another vital tip I'm going to give to you is to know the key information. These are things such as areas of shape, so areas of a cylinder, that's something that you might not come across on a daily basis. Key equations, key sets such as number of cards in a deck, number of weeks in a year, and finally key conversions such as milliliters to liters. The more you practice quantitative reasoning, the more you'll realise that there are common questions that they ask you which require you to know the key information. So if you can recall that from the top of your head really quickly, that's going to be great. That's going to save you time and again, reduce pressure and reduce stress. Another section of the UCAT is abstract reasoning. This tests your spatial awareness and your ability to recognise patterns and trends. This basically is just a whole random arrangement of shapes you've got to identify the patterns within. So my three top tips are first of all learn mnemonics. There's only a finite amount of different patterns that they can test but unfortunately there are infinite numbers of ways they can present this to you. Learn a mnemonic that's going to give you triggers to easily spot these patterns. My second tip is to create a pattern list. This is just quite simply writing down every single pattern you come across as and when you come across it. And this is going to be good because you're going to see that a lot of patterns are repeating themselves. And then finally, the three box method. So your three box method applies only to your type one and type four questions. Again, when you start practicing the UCAT, you'll know what type one and type four questions uh, so with the three box method, you're going to look at the simplest shape and try and identify the pattern there. Once you think you've got it, you're going to look at two other boxes and see if you can identify the same pattern there. If you can, it's very likely that you've identified the whole pattern. Don't waste time trying to go through every single box to make sure that pattern works. If you've got it in three box already, great, you've got the pattern there. Move on and answer the questions. Another section of the UCAT is decision making. This tests your ability to solve problems, particularly under pressure. Like I said, with the UCAT there's a time pressure for every single section and with this you're given information presented in different ways and you just have to come to the right conclusion, the right answer from the options presented. My first tip for this is to understand the question types in decision making. There's six different question types and the only way you're actually going to know how to answer the questions if you understand what's been asked of you. So in my ebook I've outlined the six different types and also given a lot more tips on how you can approach these question types and how you can answer them. You also want to practice logical reasoning to sharpen up your approach and just generally how you think. You want to make sure that you've got a sturdy approach and you know how to tackle such situations. My third tip is make full use of your UCAT whiteboard or scratch pad. So you're not going to need this for absolutely every single question and through more practice you're going to realise which questions you do need the whiteboard for and which ones you don't. But the whiteboard's there for a reason. Make use of it for things like drawing tables um, or just writing down notes or trying to figure out patterns or even drawing Venn diagrams. This is going to reduce any stress that you're going to feel. And of course, with less stress, you're going to work better. You're going to 
reach a more sound and hopefully correct conclusion. So the final section of the UCAT is a situational judgment test. So this test for the essential qualities of doctor or dentist such as professionalism, teamwork, empathy, moral reasoning and integrity. It just basically wants to find out are you a good person and do you have the traits to make a good doctor or dentist? Hopefully the answer is yes but if you're not too sure there are things that you can do to turn this into a definite yes. So my first tip for SJT is to understand the UCAT definitions of the answer options. All the questions in the UCAT are multiple choice and with this there are two question types. You either rate an answer option based on appropriateness or importance. Within those sections of appropriateness and importance there are four subsections. From the top of my head for importance I know it's very important, important, of minor importance and not important at all. It might seem basic, it might seem obvious of what those mean but the way I define important might be very different to the way you define importance. So it's important or it's essential that you use this universal definition of these answer options. Again in my ebook I've outlined what these definitions actually are. Another tip is to be aware of the hospital hierarchy and the limitations within each position. For example you've got your medical students at the bottom hierarchy and your consultants right at the top. So you want to know the limitations of um, a medical student and what's expected of them and as with a consultant and everyone else in between and you want to ensure that you are answering the questions within those limitations because that is going to help you decide how important or how appropriate the actions to take are and finally familiarise yourself with the four pillars of medical ethics these are autonomy, beneficence, beneficence? I would have said that wrong, my apologies, um, non-maleficence and justice. So familiarise yourself, get to know what they are and get to know when and how they're appropriate. The majority of UK universities do use the UCAT but they all use it and consider it differently and this is really good because although it's great to aim for a really high score to make your application look much more attractive, it also means that if you do get a low score it's not the end of your application. So by that I mean that there are some universities which don't place a massive emphasis on it and those are the ones that will still consider you if you do have a lower score. Always be sure to check university websites for all the information you need on how they use their UCAT score. A couple last points before I round up the video. The UCAT is an extremely difficult test. I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but it's an important test in your medicine or dentistry application. With that, it's a game of practice and it's something that you will get better at through lots and lots of practice. With anything you do, dedication, hard work and practice is going to get you the outcome that you want and you desire. So yes, you can start giving up sometimes. I advise you keep your end goal at the forefront of your mind. To keep you on track, to carry on practicing, even when it seems like there's no hope in sight. It's also just one of those hurdles you need to get over, you need to get across in order to come in one step closer to completing the application and achieving your goal. So you've got this and you can do this. If you've not already sat the UCAT, good luck. And I wish you all the best with it. For more advice and more help on the UCAT, be sure to have a look at my ebook, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and check out my website. So that's the end of the video and everything that I've got to say for now about the UCAT. Thank you so much for watching and all the best. I hope you found the video useful. Like I said earlier, if you like the video, then make sure you give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you in my next video.